So let's run you through the Fuso starting grid for this one. Sebastian Bourdais behind the wheel. Jamie Winkup puts it on pole yet again. Wins the bottom at the front row of the grid. Will Power will get us underway for the Orcon Steel FPR Falcon. John o. Webb and Mark Lee look out for Mark from position number three. Mika Salo will start it off for Will Davison whose day should have been so much better yesterday. Rick Kelly and Graham Rahal for Jack Daniels Racing. Graham is the son of Bobby Rahal, Darren Turner with James Courtney this weekend for the Holden Racing Team. They were in the thick of it at the end of the race yesterday, but had a little problem that sort of counted them out having a good attack. Richard Lyons, winner on the Sunday with Frosty Winterbottom last year. He's paired up with Craig Lowndes. Boris said and Steve Owen will be next to them. So positions 9 and 10 go to cars 18 and 9. Your own Bleaker Molen driving with Shane Van Gisbergen. Tim Slade and David Brabham just outside the 10. Garth Tanner and Ryan Briscoe started 24th yesterday, made up 20 spots. Russell Ingle, Peter Dumbreck for Super Cheap Auto Racing. Max Pappas has the job with Stevie Johnson in car 17, position 14. There's Lee Holdsworth and Simon Paginot, who had a wrist injury after yesterday's big crash at the first crack at the start. He seems to be OK. It also cut his hand as well. Nick Heidfeld, German ex-Formula 1 star, has David Reynolds. Job in car 55, David Wall and Jamie Campbell-Walter for Wilson Security Racing. So it's good to see them a little bit further up the grid. Dean Fiore, Gianni Mor Morbidelli, Fabian Coulthard and Nicholas Manassian. He was the man caught standing still in the second crack at the start yesterday. Got wiped out by Frank Montagny. James Hinchcliffe, Lucas Degrassi and Michael Patrizzi. We're being told car 91 won't be part of this one, so that spot will be clear on the grid. Tim Blanchard filling in for the rest of the season for Todd Kelly, Greg Murphy and Justin Wilson, and there's Taz Douglas. And Mike Conway for Team I Select. So it'll be 24 starters. Thank you. Right, mate. Slower up. Okay. So although there was plenty of drama and we did okay, speculate that there might be a change of strategy, there is none. So all these guys, the pressure is on them again, full fuel load, soft tyres, very hard to get these cars off the line. Which is interesting because we thought that somebody would perhaps alter the way they're going about it. They're, what they're trying to do is get to the first opportunity where the minimum number of co-driver laps have been achieved. Under theory, at least, it should be a two-stop race. There's one issue, though, that they've got to be mindful of at the start of this race. That wasn't there yesterday, that tyre bundle at the apex of Turn 1. And they need to be thoughtful about that as they approach for today. Car 30 coming into pit lane. Green flag, green flag. Mike Conway for the team I select. Commodore in pit lane, OK. This is it. Absolutely critical to get this start right because we know what can go wrong. Nervous oh, times. No. Oh, no, Cox. But the Cox has oh. stopped. Oh. Thankfully, we've avoided mayhem, at least off the start. Bourdais will charge them down to turn one. Mark Lee's going to slot in on the inside of Will Power and take the advantage through and get the spot. So Power and Turner had to go across the curbing down there. Conway came in, smart to strategic play, to actually grab some fuel and leave from the lane. But these two cars stranded, the first one being driven by Cox. We went on board with him earlier. And car number 12, Johnny Morbidelli, in the sister car from Dick Johnson Racing, literally had to pull up and stop. Fortunately, though, no contact. We're looking, in fact, right outside our commentary box window. We can see both cars. And Morbidelli is now able to grab the car in gear and has driven away. Well, let's remember that Peter Cox in car 18 and James Moffat, that was in position 9, so that could have gone really haywire. Did a very good job by the entire field to deal with it. Now, the interesting thing is I bumped James Moffat yesterday. They broke a tail shaft in this car yesterday, and they broke one at Bathurst 2 from recollection. So they've got a bit of driveline drama going. Now, I'm not saying it is that. It could be anything. But uh, they have had some transmission trauma just recently. So there were 14 cars behind the one that stalled. Now that could have been where the ugliness was and then Johnny Morbidelli got squeezed over right behind car 18 and did a great job to stop it just millimetres away. And Nicola Manassian was in the Lockwood car and he actually fenced him in there. There was nowhere to go. If you watch this, there's the yellow car stationery. Watch and you'll see Manassian ultimately shoving to some extent car number 12 into that position. And David Brabham did a great job. He was the car right behind Cox. 
And as he, look at that, that is just a fantastic bit of driving. When the cars are sliding and wheel spinning, he moved it just slightly with the wheel and missed it by nothing. James Moffat very disappointed, obviously. It does look like a driveline failure because he hasn't been able to start it. You know who else okay, missed mate. him We're by a whisker is Simon Pagenaud. Who would have been thinking, not again. Not again what? today. So car 18 leaves the track. And this delivers a little bit of what some of them were calling for yesterday, which is a rolling start. So with the Pettis STP safety car takes control of the field, that's effectively what you get. And that'll be a, a big saviour. So the safety car activated straight away. Mark Lee, before that, managed to make up one spot. And Power and Turner in cars 5 and 22 had to surf straight through the traffic island down there to take avoiding action. So at least in relative terms, it's a cleaner start than yesterday. Okay, confirming a restart into this lap safety car, but just hold on till I release you. When Tim calls the release, it'll speed up and come back into the lane and the leader must maintain its pace all day. Once it's in the lane, it can set a new pace. And it'll be a real relief, Neil, for the guys because these starts are unbelievably stressful. The rolling starts are more like they're used to. That's power through there and that's Turner behind him. So both those guys, although they drove through, the, the officials have looked at it and they haven't gained an advantage where they were prior to the first corner. Yeah, can't get you any news, funnily enough, out of the James Moffat or number 18 car on the grid there. Uh, we don't know if it's broken something or stalled because they can't talk to him. He's turned the master switch off in the car, which has turned the radio off, so they can't communicate with him at the moment. So the marshals would have done that, Larko. When they got there with the car, they would have flicked the master, the master switch, which in the end now has taken the communication right out. So we'll follow that for you as the day goes on. We will find out what's happened to car 18. And very disappointing for James Moffat. So Bourdain has control of the field. And that's the call. As soon as Mark Dutton gives that call, Bourdain sets his own pace. And straight away on leave, he made a jump that's beautiful. So he's got no stress going into the first corner. He's effectively on his own qualifying lap now with cooler tyres. That is a bad restart for Lee. He drove very well yesterday. And a big lock-up. Big lock up there. That was Salo. He had the wheel locked for ages. He's ended up releasing the wheel but having to go through the first chicane. And there's very likely when he's carried it for that long, a big flat spot on that tyre. It looked like a 50 cent piece. Good move. Sarazen down the inside at turn four. So Bourdain, brilliant restart. Well, Lee couldn't go with him through the chicanes. Will Power, good restart as well. Salo, big lockup. There's Richard Lyons. Then it's Graham Rahal. Then Darren Turner, Bleak Mullen, Sed, Briscoe, Dumbreck, Pappas, Rabbit. Such a relief when you dive into that first corner and you've got no one attacking, no one in the rear mirror. So when you're poor day in that circumstance, you can set your own pace at the beginning of the race. So this is turn 11, all through cleanly. How close was Bleak Mullen then on the edge of the fence? Normally left hand drive. Porsche driver and I'm sure on the right hand side that fence was coming at him pretty quickly at a big handful of opposite lock and just got through there. So a standing lap time of 114.5 for Bordet. That's a great shot. That's 265 kilometers an hour. Sixth gear run into turn one. It just shows what importance there is on qualifying, Mark, because when you go to the tail of the field, you're talking about 15 seconds behind after one lap. I mean, you would spend a race trying to recover that. 100%. So Lee, on that lap, was seven tenths of a second slower. Most of that was the first part of the start before they even got to the control line. And Lee drove very, very well yesterday, so we'll see how he responds now. It's also a good test for Will Power. Gianni just made it in. He had the wheel locked on the way into turn 11. Then Lee just got away with that. This will be good for all these guys, particularly with the stop-start nature yesterday. Here's the lock-up again, trading post car into turn one. So they're finding a rhythm now. The cars are heavy. They've got 90-odd kilos of fuel on board. The tyres will be coming up. The temperature of the day is up. The road temperature is up, so the tyres will be pressing up to somewhere near normal now. And they'll slowly begin to trim their brake bias and their anti-roll bars to compensate for the way the cars feel. 
and lead fastest of the top guys. So the next lap, he's done a 14-2, three tenths faster than Bourdain. So that's a good reaction. That's Will Power straight ahead at the first chicane. That was pretty wild, too, for car 19 on entry into there, but held on to it. Bourdain responds to the pressure from lead. He's done the fastest split to the end of the first sector on this lap. Super slow-mo replay. Just, you can look at so many different things here, but the tyre deflection, the amount of air, the outside tyres, look at the way that they're distorting and look at the way in which Seb is controlling the car. You can see the thing flexing with all that load. Brilliant. Second sector, also fast for Bourdais. 46.7 on this lap, so he's settling in quickly. That's Richard Lyons, race winner here on the Sunday last year with Mark Winterbottom, position five at the moment. Then it's Graham Rahal, Darren Turner next, then Blicker Molan in Shane Van Gisbergen's car. Boris said, who did the commentary earlier on the Utes with Aaron and Ryan Briscoe in the top 10. 13.9, one minute 13.9, fastest lap of the race and a gap of 1.4 seconds for day to leave. Meanwhile, Richard Lyons is getting ready to take a shot at Mika Salo, who would have a damaged tyre after that big lockup. Cars are at the northern end of the Surfers Paradise Complex. This is the Armour All Gold Coast 600 on 7. Welcome back. 1 minute 13.7, fastest lap of the race, Sebastian Bourdais. Here's a passing move for Darren Turner. Down the inside nicely on Graham Rahal about 20 seconds ago at turn 3. Cleanly done. Meantime, Ryan Briscoe's moved up a spot as well. There is Ryan. He's now up into ninth position, getting plenty of air in the middle of the chicane. Started in 12th, so that's a very good performance in those early laps. Lounsey looks on with that big smile that he's famous for, but under that big smile is a very, very competitive guy. We say it all the time, and he'll be very interested in Richard Lyon's progress and what he's going to do with Salo, because Salo is having the same effect as he had over board A yesterday. Looks like he's going to be very hard to pass. Terrific shot down the back straight, isn't it? I just bumped into James Moffat. He's still none the wiser about car 18 for the very same reason. The master switched off, so he's come back to pack up. His day is done, and he still doesn't know why, what happened to Peter Cox at the start. Notice that Will's got his cool vest on, just to try and keep his core temperature down. Even with the cool suits in the car, it's astonishingly hot inside these cars at the moment. 13.5. 
continues to lower the fastest lap of the race, Sebastian Bourdais. He's eased it out now to nearly two seconds. Keep in mind, the majority of that was earned after the restart. So that's serving him well. Great situational awareness to jump away as quickly and cleanly as he did. But the guy that looks a bit racy at the moment is Turner. He's just having a bit of a look. He went underneath Ray Hall with ease. The rear brakes locked initially when he first made the move, but then he steadied it down, got it turned, didn't swap paint, came out the other side. And now he's just beginning to range up onto the back of Richard Lyons. I swear Salo was very good yesterday. It was difficult for Bourdais to position the car and have any opportunity to pass at turn 11. So through the fast chicane, Salo was very good. In the slower stuff, wasn't quite as good. And this is where he was vulnerable. The last two or three corners, little 90 degrees. And this one, when you come onto the straight, you can even see there Richard Lyons has gained quite a lot of ground in the last part of the lap. And this is a crucial run onto the straight. So Richard Lyons has got to work away at getting closer at the final corner to give himself any proximity for the braking area into the first chicane. And then, hopefully, down the inside in the hairpin area at turn four. following are about nine odd seconds away from the race lead at the moment and they're tightening up these four cars just in a bit of an accordion effect there at the moment meantime up the front of the field here's the margin this is Bourdais to Lieb Bourdais in the Vodafone car Mark Lieb driving for Jonathan Webb and Techno Autosport second 1.7 seconds the gap has pulled a little bit of time out of him just on this last lap Mark Lieb great friend of uh, Alex Davis and Mark Lieb and uh, enormous amount of experience in the Porsches. We go back into car triple eight now with Richard Lyons. He's working away on the back of the trading post car. That's Salo in front with another big lock up. So big he might end up in the wall. He was almost in. He was almost in the fence. Not too many get away with it there without hitting the fence. Fastest lap done by Mark Lieb. And that'll be the same tyre. He locked the inside front on the run in at the start of the race yep. here where he turned it in. So it'll be returning to its flat spot and that'll be why it's slowing him up at the moment and the reason why they're all bottling up behind him. What Richard Lyons is doing at the moment, he's, he's slowing it too much for the second part of the chicane. He got it stopped nicely for the first part but he left his foot on the brake which made the change of direction to the right too slow and then he wasn't close enough to Salo for the hairpin. So he's got to work at his mid-corner speed in that first chicane and a spin for Heidfeld. Might have got a bump there. Might have got a bump. It's dropped him to virtually the back of the field now. That's, that's Conway. That's the hair, that was at the hairpin, uh, Propo. So you're hard to have a spin there by yourself. There you go. Saracen. Saracen who was on the radio about a lap ago. I don't think it was related to this, but a lot of, didn't understand it, animated French in the background. <laughs> but he wasn't happy about something. I remember the Bobo car facing the wrong way in the same spot this time last year with Jacques Villeneuve behind the wheel. He'll be angry with that, because it's, it's, it's a... Two years ago. It's a, it's a no-need, it's a no-need one. Now, this is the speed that I said. For the first part of the chicane, he looked like he was quite good. But he's got to get through. Oh, no, he's locked the wheel. He's going to hit him. Oh, oh. straight over the tyre bundle. So, Lyons clobbered the tyres. And Turner had to go straight ahead. So this has got messy. And you worry when they get so closely bunched and out of rhythm like this. And it's all being triggered by Salo. And he didn't. That's Jeremy Moore just saying to Richard, stay cool, mate. Long race. And he's been telling him the whole time, 10 laps in, 10 laps in. So he's... He's trying to keep the communication up, but watch what happens. He locks a wheel and he has to go to the inside. That wheel locks, and that's when he spears across. And he was almost up far enough to take track position. Have a look again. He can't quite get there. He has to go across the tyres, and that's that second phase of the chicane that he needs to work on. So Darren Turner in car 22 and Graham Rahal there in car 15 will be watching all this unfold in front of them. And they're 
top left is Darren Turner's teammate James Courtney and <laughs> sweating it out, but Brian, uh, Brian Briscoe is doing a good job for Garth Tanner. And Aaron Noonan, Aaron Noonan just gave me a little note here saying, Mika uh, Salo blew a tyre in last year's race, the same sort of lockups. So this is a very hard circuit to keep the wheel from rocking in those bumpy braking areas. He's got his job cut out for him with lots of pressure on him, Matt. Minimum driver, uh, minimum laps for the co-drivers, 34, so they've got another 20 odd to go, sweating it out on the streets of Surface Paradise. And we have a safety car coming out right now. Nothing on the track, it's just a tyre bundle at turn one. So just stay good. Confirm, pitting this lap, Mika, pitting this lap. Please confirm. There's nowhere to go, like Mika just blew his door up. I confirmed already, you didn't hear me. Yeah. We'll be staying out, obviously. We'll be staying out. Safety car is on the track and waiting for you. Crystal clear surface paradise day looking down onto some madness and mayhem yet again on the circuit. Now we've had a safety car out there. It's still out there because of this, the tyre bundle down at turn one. You remember Richard Lyons and car 888 went straight over it and ripped it from its base. So half of the field has des decided to take the pit stop under the safety car. And this was probably a pretty smart thing to do for FPR because we've seen that right-hand front tyre that was heavily damaged from Salo with two big lockups. But what, what may happen is contact here, Justin Wilson fires into 21 in the fast lane, so there's damage to the right front. You can just see that there. Yeah, guys, I've managed to grab the tyre. This is off Mikasalo's car there, so you can see if you look closely, there's the steel belts of the lockup. And if you're wondering why it's in on that edge, we talk a lot about Cam, and I can tell you that is still bloody hot. Yeah, we've got Cam on it like that, so you're running a lot on this edge. So when, as Neil alluded to, it's a, we call it a two bob sometimes, but that's flat through there, I can see. So when he's going around, puts his foot on the brake, and just wants to grab that same spot. He wouldn't have got much further on that one. Yeah, that's really funny that I'm burning oh, myself with it. Hey, hey Larko, it's not a two bob, it's a 50 cent piece. That's what we say all the time. The two bob's the roundy one, the other one's got the little flats. No wonder he can't negotiate. Short chains is himself 30 cents every time. It's not going to do many handshakes, you guys, if he keeps burning them. Uh, we know what you mean, Mark, and we love you. So uh, Mark Larkin brings up the speed with uh, all the rubber torn off the car of this man. And uh, here's why this was one of several lots of lockups into turn one for him and very close to a monster moment down there when Richard Lyons clouded those tyres and dislodged them right at that point. Now, everybody from position one through 11 hasn't stopped, so that's Bourdais through to Morbidelli. And look at the super slow-mo image here of Will Power 
motocross style, launching into the air. In the old language, it's a good foot or more up on the inside. Unbelievable. And uh, positions 12 through 23 have all had the opportunity to take a stop. So they're on a different strategy. Which in one way will work in that you reduce the risk of having your car stack in future pit stops. So Salo now, for instance, is on a different strategy to power, so the FPR cars are separated. Same with HRT. Briscoe's come in against Darren Turner. The only thing that does happen with this is that you stick Mika Salo in an area of the field where you potentially have drama. Yeah, so when you have got a quick car and guys that have come out of the field in a competitive clear air running position and bolt them in the midfield or beyond, just got to hold your breath a bit sometimes because these cars are Mark Dutton calling for Sebastian Bordet to set his own pace here. You just hold your breath when it comes to the race craft for some of them. Well, let's see if Mark Lee is onto it this time because remember the last start, Sebastian Bordet just raced away down the front straight. Not really. Not really this time. lee has gone with him. Powers behind him. Then it's Richard Lyons, Darren Turner and Graham Rahal. Now down to turn one. Tire bundle. They've now been warned officially. You start running over those, you're going to end up doing a pit lane drive-through penalty. Now remember that those guys that I mentioned that have not taken a stop have had full heat in their tyres. They've cooled out a little bit in that safety car process, but they've effectively come back to temperature and pressure pretty quickly. But those behind in the second half of the field have got to bring their tyres up. However, when they do, they'll be quite quick for a few laps as well. They'll get a green tyre benefit. Black flag, PLP, car 51 for unsafe hip release. So Damien White in the background there. So car 51, Justin Wilson got the drive through for that contact. The unsafe release, as you heard. Oh, Salo. So Salo's the first of the guys on this early strategy, which he uh, is right button in the middle of the field. He's in position 12 and we'll have plenty of drama attached. This is on board now with Justin Wilson and he's coming in to serve the PLP. And so, uh, they've got a bit of flexibility with their pit stops and fuel in this race now for those guys that have taken that opportunity. It's going to be really curious to see the way in which this plays out. Borde's getting on with it with the fastest sector split to the end of sector one, so his tyres are still obviously still in good condition. There's Jonathan Webb, top left of screen. That's his teammate, Mark Lee, in the white car at the moment. Great job yesterday, great job at Bathurst, so a good strong run in the recent past. Front row starting position at Sydney Motorsport Park earlier on, so good pace. Morbidelli, why is it pointing that way? Now he was just Stick in front. Fence. He was just in front of Mika Get Salo. Get it going, Gianni. Get it going. Try and get it back for us, please, mate. He certainly was. Yeah, look at all the blue got... witness marks down the right-hand side. Now, just like Neil couldn't understand Saracen's French, we can't understand Morbidelli's Italian, but there will be plenty of drama in there because it would be hard to do that by yourself. So we'll have a look find out what's happened there because it's incurred a lot of damage at the right front and the right rear in the middle of the fastest chicane on the track. Oh, that's Solo. Definitely Solo involved. He was on the inside as they come off the last chicane. Be interesting to see what has happened there in terms of if there was any contact. 245 kilometres an hour is the approach speed into the chicane complex and at no stage are they going any slower than about 135 kilometres an hour at the Johnson clan there. Bree in the centre and Dick on the right. You're very lucky that all you've got there is a few scuffs down the right side because in that spot you know how spooky that can be. Well it's an exit speed of 150k at the apex. It's probably more like 160 or 165 k. Give me any report on the car there, Gianni. Any report? Saracen, uh, he's asking them to look at the front. Well, we can see now it's this is going, going to be a safety car. Pettis' safety car will be back out again because that car's got. Uh,
completely failed front right suspension. Is he going to be able to drag it around? Quite a disappointment. any pace into it so turn 11 the Bang. culprit oh. and big contact oh. with the concrete wall good job Campbell Walter that what we well no, no Hinchcliffe in the uh, go daddy in the Fujitsu car has done a great job to miss that then that was unbelievable he was already on the slide he gathered it up and just missed the back just just check you might you might be right have a look so watch Hinchcliffe look at oh that. good save well done well and then, done. And then in limping across, Stefan Sarazen almost collected car 14, the sister car, Nicola Manassian. But uh, thankfully, he's managed to limp at home. Sebastian Bourdais continues to do this job. Car 8, the Team BOC entry in pit lane on the streets of Surface Paradise. Stay with us. We've been racing now for 30 minutes on lap 21 out of 102. And Mark Lieb, a bit of vertigo in car 19. Wow. <laughs> That's up there for a long, long time. As I said before, Matt, I think him sitting on the right-hand side would have felt reasonably safe then because at least you're on the high side. Normally when he drives the left-hand drive Porsche, that would feel pretty bad if you're on the low side. So Sebastian Bourdais has a 2.6 second lead over Mark Lieb. You're riding with Will Power, who's behind Lieb in third. Paired up with Mark Winterbottom, of course. Richard Lyons is behind Will. And then it's Darren Turner, Graham Rahal. Your own Bleeker Mullen, David Brabham, Boris Sen and Mika Salo make up our top ten. Matty in the BAC garage with Justin Bright. And Bright, it's not great news about the car. No, it's broken up, right? When, he, when he's got the wall there, a little bit disappointing. You know, he, he's been doing a great job. You know, he's one of the quickest co-drivers out there. Not sure what happened. Probably excuse you for having your job, your mind half on the job today, because a big day tomorrow. Are you expecting your first bump? Yeah, mate, looking forward to it. Say good day to Lucy. I uh, might, might be home a little bit earlier if they don't get it fixed, but, you know, the guys will get stuck into it now and uh, hopefully get it fixed and I'll be on the, on the first flight out of here tonight. All right, Brody. All the best for today and tomorrow. Yeah, thanks, mate. Cheers. So uh, there's the boys in at Team BOC and uh, Lockwood Wally Story there, one of the senior engineers, was just in the foreground and we wish uh, Lucy well. And, but I'm asking myself the question because I was still getting press releases from her as recently as last night, so she should be concentrating on the pub, not doing Brighty's PR. 
Grand Boys to add to the Bridie car, the Gianni Morbidelli car. Looks like they're just about to put it on the deck, mainly just panel damage. They've been in underneath having a really good look at the Watts link. Remember we talk about the item that laterally locates the diff in the car. Uh, it looks like they may put a new bolt in there, but nothing too serious. So they're just about to wheel him out. He's underway. Hey, Marco, is there any witness damage on the back of that car that may have a bit of uh, West Track signage on it from Salo? Oh, mate, look, to be honest, it's pretty badly damaged all around. Just looking, um... No, nothing obvious, mate. Nothing obvious. I know you're trying to always try and noose someone if you can. I'm not. I'm not trying instance. to noose anyone. I just... We haven't got the, uh, the shot from the back of the, uh, the chicane, and it's hard to know what had gone on there, because it'd be very hard to have a spin by yourself there, was what the point was. Sebastian Bourdais is doing a Wind Cup-esque kind of job. He's laying down fastest lap after fastest lap and taking advantage of being the first guy on the track. So he's just done a 113 flat, and he's also done the quickest time to the second sector on this lap. He's now at a 3.4 second lead over Mark Lieb. And he's now dipped into the 12s for the first time, Sebastian Bourdais. So here we go. Whoop. Richard Lyons straight through. Saw his name come up on the computer timing with a little black mark against him as a result of that. He's fourth at the moment, but it's the better option sometimes. I mean, you know, take the spanking from the system and the headmaster's watching because if you do attack the curbs, well, we've seen the consequences. And that was an awkward one for Richard Lyons because it caught the inside of the wheel and that's why it flicked him, flicked him over towards the left. So here's a good little battle group. We've got James Hinchcliffe putting a move on Max Pappas. The damaged car number 55 of Nick Heidfeld is also in there. And Michael Caruso has had a lot of that going on this weekend, biting his fingernails. And what a pity for Michael Caruso that unfolded the way it did yesterday because he was so good on Friday. The car looked so good. They were a good combination. And then it just went haywire from the start. Scaife, he just had a quick chat with Dean Fioro, who's partnering Jenny Morbidelli, and uh, he said, uh, Gianni said, oh, there you go. It's all right, stay, stay with us. That's yeah, sorry, mate. Uh, and he said, uh, Morbidelli said, sorry. And as you know, the driver's handbook, mate, when a driver says sorry, absolutely no one else is involved. Well done, Marco. Well followed up. And it may, it may be that, because it's, uh, it is off that last curve quite wild. As we said, it's quite fast. But if you get a little bump in the middle of it, then it's very easy to unload the guy in front. So if uh, Gianni said that, then it's probably his mistake by himself. So Heidfeld's had a pretty interesting start in this race today. A couple of little mistakes. There's a bit of a dejected, forlorn look on Dave Reynolds. Good pass. There with Hinchcliffe, and there's Heidfeld with a little dodging car action. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> you lunatic. That was at the start of the back straight, and then, of course, at the end of the back straight, Heidfeld ends up having to lock it up. So, Bourdais done it again, 112.9. He's lowering the mark and increasing his lead, 4.7 seconds. Look at that. Lap 24, lap 23, lap 22. He's just going... On with it and on with it. Mark Dutton just said to him, great driving, you're doing really well, but you're going really fast. Just be careful you don't take any risks. 112.8 now, so he's lowered the mark yet again. Five fastest laps of the race in a row for Sebastian Bourdais. He's setting it up nicely, but there's a very long way to go in this one this afternoon, and there's a lot of concrete that still wants to have its say.
Well, that's the gap that Sebastian Bourdais is putting on Mark Lead. So it's car one versus 19, which is exactly how they finished yesterday. With Jamie Wincup and Bourdais winning race 22 and Mark Lieb and Jonathan Webb on the podium as well. But he's building this lead, Crompo. It's now out to seven seconds over lead. Will Power is third. And Richard Lyons, Darren Turner and Graham Rahal are doing their best to try and catch that leading group. Great performance when you consider that we had Two safety car interventions, and the second one was done at lap 15. And here comes Salo down the inside, continuing to force his way through. That's uh, position eight for him now, past Blickermolen, who's driving Van Gisbergen's car. And a, a bad sportsmanship flag also for Boris Set in car 49 VIP Pet, uh, pet Foods, continually uh, striking the tyre bundle and the kerbs in an inappropriate manner. So they're watching that pretty carefully. How was that shot when we came back looking to the south? down Service Paradise all the way down towards Cool and Gatter. It's an amazing place for a race. Boris said has been uh, very well behaved this week and remember last year he paid scant regard to curb hopping rules but now he's um, having a bit of a, a bit of a go in his last stint. There's only another five laps for these guys to complete minimum number they don't have to stop but 34 is what they have to do good move ryan briscoe on the inside of boris so ryan goes up to position 10. so remember half the field about half the field came in under the safety car and elected to do their pit stop so we've got two sets of strategies going on here i love that shot too crompo just just see the pitch and roll of the cars as they go through those chicanes track temperature there 40 degrees as Shane Van Gisbergen gets ready to jump in the SP Tools Ford Falcon. Nice move Ryan Briscoe before there's Rick Kelly and uh, there's oh, Todd. There he is. So all the wings look intact. <laughs> right, right one's a bit average he probably won't swim that straight will he? <laughs> and great news through the week that Jack Daniels have resigned with the Kellys for 2013 and beyond on a multi-year deal. So that's great news for them as they head into the world of Nissan Motorsport. Clipsal 500 next year onwards. And a lot of work to do for them, but a great opportunity for genuine factory support and something that now, with Jack Daniels' continued support, great viability and business case for them over the next few years. As we see Briscoe down the inside of Bleakamolan. He's got reasonable speed, and that's safety car. Again. That was a, a good timely pass there from Briscoe because he was already down there at that stage. Well, it's too early for a lot of people here who've played the alternate strategy of leaving their co-drivers in the car because we're only, we've only completed 29 laps, they're on the 30th, and they need to do 34 for the driver minimum. So I'd be curious to see how they play this. And how would you feel being Sebastian Bourdais at the moment? You've spent the last 10 laps going ballistic, <laughs> getting an 11.2 second lead. <laughs> Just about to hand back the car to Jamie Winkup with this enormous lead behind you, and now the safety car is going to squeeze it all up. One thing you could do here as Craig gets ready at Team Vodafone, if you're towards the back of the queue, come in now with your co driver in, squirt a bit of gas in it, do your minimum laps, come back in, put your primary driver in. It'll change the way the story's told. Yeah, copy that, mate. Uh, we, we might do that, as long as there's, uh, as long as there's no risk. Uh, Right-hand side tyres are on. Uh, got about 15 seconds to go.
What's the uh, safety car for? I'm honestly not sure. I think it might be debris. We're back on the streets of the Gold Coast under safety car conditions where the first 30 laps have been highlighted by this brutal assault on the kerbs at, at this circuit. Somehow the cars managed to stand up to it. Down at uh, car 55 of Nick Heidfeld and Davy Reynolds. David's brought his Very baby powder with him for this weekend. <laughs> It's always nice to smell better. <laughs> to get the seat in and out, you do. We know he's standing by it. And uh, one of the issues in these races is just managing the whole business of getting the drivers in and out. We were talking about it in the break, and uh, on, the, on the best days, it's 15 seconds. And invariably, the harder you try, the more you keystone cop it and the slower you go. So gloves and belts and elastic bands go everywhere. Well, yesterday, I remember when um, when Mark Winterbottom jumped in and Will Power had come out. Will, by the way, had radio dramas as well. Couldn't hear the um, instructions to come on in. Hadn't uh, loosened his belts enough, so it was just one more little drama yeah. that Frosty had to contend with. It only took him a couple of seconds to do it, but a couple of seconds is a lifetime in pit lane. And it wasn't as bad as, as Will Powell. Was the other, was it last year or the year before where he didn't have his gloves and stuff? Oh, yeah. Remember he come oh, running out and didn't have his gear on? Yeah. Space. We have to stand out. He's rocking. We'll get time back. We'll get him good. How long is the stop time? Full tank. 29. Come on, boys. Come on. Hey. So a little team meeting with Chris O'Toole and the guys at FPR. That's always a good policy just before those sorts of stops. In fact, Fred Gibson was the first one in Australian motorsport to ever do it. You get the guys all together, calm them down. This is what we had to do. And the process can be a frenzied process if it's not conducted properly. And Vodafone at the moment are the best in pit lane at it. Mark Dutton gives Sebastian Bourdais the go-ahead and he cuts loose down this front straight so it was debris on the track that caused the safety car it is now being cleaned up there was a chunk of concrete down there so they've taken it off and it was down here it turns one and two you can see a shot of it in the break a nasty chunk down there that had to be removed so again for some of these guys they don't want to bring the co-drivers in until they clear this minimum requirement to do their 34 laps Salo gets a spot off Graham Rahal and Ryan Briscoe goes as well. So this relentless charge from car number two in the last 15 or so laps continues. Briscoe goes up to seventh. Bourdais leads them through. Then it's Mark Lee, Will Power, Richard Lyons, Darren Turner. They're all bunched up after this restart. And the, the thing that's happened, you said about Bourdais losing that lead and that gap that he had of almost 12 seconds. That's absolutely right, Matt. But what's done is because Salo and a lot of the guys that have already had a stop, they've brought them forward. Yeah. So their stop time now will be less. So his effective track position has been improved massively under safety car condition and with this strategy of Salo's. He's had a double bite. Great job here, Ryan Briscoe at the moment in that number two Holden Racing Team car. He was very quick at Daytona in the 24 hour at the beginning of the year and they had reliability troubles with that car. He was on the pole for the Indy 500. And how's the speed? His average lap speed to achieve the pole at Indy in May in the Memorial Day weekend was 364 kilometres an hour in that Penske he drives. Stop and think about that for a number. A win at Sonoma. He won here in the Indy car. Uh, when was that? Back in about 08, I think it was. So he's very good here at this track, and he's certainly blazing along nicely at the moment. He's in seventh and on a charge. And there's a lot of guys now. There's radios gone off in pit lane. There's a lot of guys that are contemplating coming in right now. So, so Salo's in sixth. And the seven guys that haven't stopped who will now because they've completed their requirement. Dave Reynolds on standby. Craig uh, Lowndes on sta uh, standby. So look at this. And uh, they're just discussing at Vodafone whether or not uh, they're allowed to drive through GRM. Looks like that'd be a no-go based on the body language. It, it did, didn't it? Lucas Harlow has had three or four looks at Darren Turner, who goes in. So, lead in. 
Power in, Lions in, Turner in, Ray Hall in, Blinker Molan, Hinchcliffe, Conway and Heidfeld. So, yep, three, so about eight cars have come in there. So only Bourdais hasn't stopped. And he's just done the fastest lap of the race. Not a bad ploy because uh, no congestion. Of course, they don't want two Vodafone cars in there at once, and they've got fuel flexibility because of the two safety car interventions. Richard Lyons has cottoned on to the V8 supercar way of getting into pit lane and getting the benefit. He tucks See? right up behind the car in front of him. So Mark Winterbottom is now on board car five. Oh, here we go. Oh, close. Easy exit for Lowndes, but a very tight one for Caruso. And there's a wheel off that car. Yeah, he's got a drama. He's going to have to pull over to the left, which he's done. Yeah, there's a wheel off that car. It's tracking around everywhere. He's not going to be able to get around, I don't think, is he? Dragon too bad, mate. Don't drag it for fast. Nah. So is it, it looks like the wheel's completely off. Oh. It's a three-wheel model the way it is. Look at the sparks. The sparks out the back of the, the right-hand side. Look. Yeah. you got to go so slowly. they just got to take your poison here. This is a... I believe the wheel's still in the pit box. The car is left. There's no wheel down here. Well, if that's been the case, then the car controller hasn't been signaled. This is what Matt was referring to. Bang! And that was Richard Lyons doing the V8 supercar pit entry trick. <laughs> It'd be hello and welcome. Oh, Frosty. Look at this. this. Look at the activity. Can't get out. Look at his face. Jesus. Look at the intensity. And you, the feeling of being bottled in there if he was jammed for whatever reason. You know, there's just so many seconds that burn away. And there's Caruso out of the car and absolutely livid. Yeah, and a bit of intensity down here in the garage. I mean, I don't have to uh, ask anyone a question down here. The body language, the chat between the guys, clearly human error. The car's gone down before the wheel was on. Simple as that. Sebastian Bourdais has come into pit lane. OK, let's watch this. So you'll see car 34 now exit, but look, the wheel's just still sitting there. It's not on. It hasn't come out. So it hasn't come out. There's no, at that stage, the guy is yelling out, where's the wheel, where's the wheel, and there is no wheel. Now this is back live, just to make the point. This was the race leader, four day out. Jamie went cup in. That's break water and then drive and drink water. So Salo, so we're waiting on Salo. This will be a very interesting scenario here with what happens with him and what they choose to do because this exit, when Salo comes in to make this stop, he should be the beneficiary. But remember, he did stop out of sequence. So when Salo stopped on lap 13, as I said before, it gives them a bit of flexibility to kind of choose a little where they want to drop this in. Remember the start range off the start of the race with 120 litres on gives you 44 laps. The reason they're stopping at the moment is to get the, and we don't mean this in any disrespectful way, but the slower of the two drivers out of the car. The fastest way to win the race is with the fastest guy in the car. No doubt, but the other point is that you can't be out of sync now with the last part of the strategy, because the way to win the race is have a shorter stop. So he's shorter stop at track position, Salo should come in very shortly so that he's not hurt by some change of safety car or whatever that gets the other guys back to him again. The gap that he has now will win the race if he comes in. And if you work backwards from a full tank of fuel to the end of the race, the critical lap that Mark Larkin often speaks of down in the Dick Smith Tech Centre is lap 56 in this race. Fill her up at 56. You can get home. We're currently on lap 38, as you can see. This is very important time, very important strategy call, this one. Might be in that pit lane at 100. Or well, 40 is the case, maybe. <laughs>
He'd go in. Kill get, Joy. He'd go in at the police. <laughs> Find somebody to bump into to get down. Shoot the messenger. I've just got the radar gun. <laughs> I'll do the Richard Lyons technique. <laughs> so we're on lap 39. Will Davison waiting, waiting, and waiting. This strategy could play out beautifully for car six. So Mika Salo continues to push on. Greg, Greg Murphy's complaining that uh, he's got very poor brake pedal in his car at the moment and wanted to know whether or not Justin Wilson had complained to the brakes, but Murphy's saying they're going to the floor, which have some sort of an issue. Big slide out there around turn 12. Good work, Nico. Another one. Good job. So they'll be busily doing the numbers. Okay, I'm doing them at the moment. So that lap was a 113.03. So he gained some time on the next car on the list, which is Ryan Briscoe. Here's Lowndes. You see from uh, lap 13 and the 46 lap range with a full tank, you can get to 59. Maybe they think that his lap speed's good enough and they'll leave him in for longer. That well, so. he's still doing what? You don't think so? No. He's still doing 113s. We'll wait and see. See who wins your argument. The intensity has just gone up a notch with the main drivers all on board now, or pretty much all on board. As this uh, run to the flag now starts to heat up. Race 23 of the championship, so we're on lap 42. Our Coates Hire Chopper has done a brilliant job this weekend weaving in and out of the buildings, following our cars along this circuit that snakes around alongside the back, uh, alongside the beach on the back straight, of course, and then back down here to the front straight away. We may as well ride with this one as well. So 265 k's maximum down here. Big pit lane complex and corporates on our left hand side. They've been well supported this weekend. Now down to turns one, two and three, the tyre bundle. Just by way of comparison, Matt, as we went to the break, we saw Salo doing a 13-1, a one minute 13.1. Wind Cup, who is racing, is in the mid-12s at the moment, but he's in traffic as well. He's about half a second a lap faster. However, he's got uh, 
to see. He's got the best part of 50 odd seconds, 53 seconds as a margin over him at the moment, Salo. So if they all stop again, as they've all got to stop again, but if they all stopped again now, Salo would have a, what, a 45 second style stop. So he's got an effective track gain. The problem is, is that the safety car at some point will have an effect on this if it comes out again in terms of the effective position that uh, Salo's got. So what they're doing is they're leaving Salo out to try to get to lap 55 or 56 to get home. So there's a lot of now real strategy calls in the FPR garage as to have who you're racing and where the gap comes from. Scofie, you're exactly right. Will is just sitting here, toes tapping at the moment, very edgy, ready to go. So if there is a safety car, Will, you will dive straight in. Yeah, sorry if I leave you mid-conversation, but yeah, safety car, I'll be in straight away. Otherwise, we've got enough fuel to only do one more stop. So we're actually in quite a uh, quite a decent position at the moment. Um, but, you know, to be honest, if it comes down to a race at the end, my tyres probably won't be as good, but we've got great track position at the moment. The strategy's actually worked out pretty handy. Mick a flat spot at a tyre, but coming in on that safety car's... Um, actually worked wonders and he, he's doing a cracking job now in some fresh air. All right, well, let's just stand by. All the best, Will. Yeah, I've got to, uh, I've got to redeem myself after yesterday, so I'm a bit nervous. Good luck, mate. Down here in the Murphy Wilson Garage car, 51. They've got the car in. It looks like the front under tray's loose, and what's happened is the brake duct had popped out of there. And if you reckon they don't work, let me tell you they do, because look at the... Look at the damage, when I say damage, look at the grooves in the dish there, and you should have seen the temperature of the brake, brake fluid when they were bleeding it there. There was steam coming off it. Now, while we're talking heat, in here, uh, I managed to get my heat gun in the cockpit of Rick Kelly's cabin as he was getting in. Uh, hard to get a measurement, but sort of in the 50 to 60 degrees centigrade temperature around the footwell driver's seat. Now, talking of temperature, another one that's got the temperature up is Gary Rogers. Gary, um, keen to have a chat. I mean, clearly that was a blue, mate. Uh, hard to get a read on what went wrong, what went wrong. Oh, it was a bad blue. I mean, we couldn't get him out early because he hadn't done enough laps. But it's like the old story, you know, you've got to be just quiet in the heat of the moment. And look, these guys do a great job and uh, we, we just mucked it up. Someone dropped the car, the wheel wasn't right. So there's a couple of hours to kill. Where to from here, mate? Well, I can feel a cold ale lingering towards me. I might have to go and have a couple. But anyway, listen, you know, it's just, it's a bummer, but we've got to get over it. Thanks, mate. There was all that damage done yesterday for Gary's cars. One of our uh, former commentary colleagues who works in the US these days, Lee Diffie's in town and he's been down in the Gary Rogers garage and I said to him this morning, what did Gary do when he saw all that damage? And he said, well, there isn't much we could do except let's go have a beer. So Bill Gibson, who handles all the freight for V8 Supercar, Gary Rogers and Lee Diffie sat on a milk crate at the back of the pit bunker yesterday after he'd spent a, probably a hundred odd thousand dollars in damage and had a quiet beer and thought about life at Surface Paradise. <laughs> not not a bad policy. Zero points for GRM all weekend. Oh, that is massive. Todd Kelly would be looking in the garage saying that was kissed. Very, very close. Tim Blanchard behind the wheel on car number seven. I'm oh, just with Todd now, who, who took a deep breath there, Todd. Yeah, it um, looks like fun out there, especially with the new curbs over the back. But having the old arm in a sling and watching certainly makes you realise how much it is you enjoy racing cars. It's um, not where I'm supposed to be sitting here in the garage, that's for sure. Hey, good news, though, that you're back at the track so quickly. Obviously, the operation was, was good. Yeah, it all went fine. Uh, I should be back in a car sometime in February, just before uh, Clips Hall, hopefully. Let's have a look at that slide. They're uh, colourful. Yeah, I don't know whether he hit the fence. There's no smoke coming off it, so I hope he's looking after my car. Hey, you've had some good news, too. Jack Daniels signing up for a long period as well. Yeah, it's been great. It's uh, been a really good relationship we've had with Jack Daniels. Rick and I are extremely close to the brand and, and passionate about their brand, and it's a perfect fit for our team. So to re-sign them for a multi-year deal with Nissan and Car the Future, it's not only great for us, but great for Nissan and for the sport. So uh, hopefully we can get them some really good results next year. Good luck with the shoulder. We'll see you back soon, Todd. Thanks. David Reynolds just done the fastest lap, a 112.435. Mika Salo is doing mid-13s. So a 12.4 for Dave Reynolds in the last lap, a mid-13, 13.5 for Salo. So he's got a 5.7 second lead. Can they keep him out there? 
Can they turn it around today? Craig Lowndes has won twice on the Gold Coast Street Circuit, but right now he's in a world of pain. He's reporting problems back to Jeremy Moore, and, and he's clearly not happy. Oh. Got a big clutch slip. Drama going, this is a replay of Courtney going by. And you can see him shaking his head, and he's been told not to use the clutch. Guys, just had a chat to Jeremy Moore, Craig Lanza's engineer, and they have a hydraulic problem with the clutch. Uh, just as that happening, uh, Michael Caruso has just made his way back into the garage here, and tough for the team. The boys coming together. Michael, uh, that, that's hard, mate. That's a tough pill to swallow this afternoon. It is. It's, um, I mean, we've come off such a good run at Bathurst. Uh, the car's been strong. And, um, yeah, obviously, I haven't turned a lap here in the race this weekend, and... Um, very disappointed with everyone at Fujitsu Racing. As we saw, they've got a lot of work to do and maybe a little bit more now. So, uh, you know, we've got a week to get ready for Abu Dhabi and um, just got to get the chins up. We'll see you in Abu Dhabi. Thank you very much. See you guys. Yeah, Michael Caruso and Greg Ritter finished fifth at the mountain. And um, like uh, Michael just said, he hasn't turned a lap in the race this weekend. Either is Greg Ritter, who's been, or came in for car 33 with Gary Rogers deciding to bench Alex Premer for this one. So it's uh, when it goes wrong around here, it goes really wrong. So Lowndes trying to punch on. And he's got Mark Winterbottom behind him. Picasalo's lead is 7.1 seconds. The target for them is lap 55 or 56. From there on, they can get home. They can swap drivers, fill her up, and get home without having to stop again. Their biggest danger is a safety car coming out within the next six laps. Their biggest advantage is track space. It's a great view from on board. Looking out the front of car five, Mark Winterbottom down to turn one. That's a tyre bundle on the left. Turn four, 160 on approach. Oh. Up to 11. 
so many people end up in that wall on the right-hand side. Left, right. Right again, and then the sweeping left-hander to bring you back around onto the final turn. And the front straight, Jamie Winkup, by the way, is just about to post the fastest lap of the race and has done so, 112.322 for our championship leader. That lap was a 112.7 that you were riding with for Mark Winterbottom. So just four tenths off, the fastest man out there at the moment. So his strategy game will not become clearer until we get to lap 56. Assuming we can go the next four or five laps without a safety car. See everybody on standby for a safety car. And at the moment, FPR will be locked into having to come in around that 56 lap time frame because they'll need to put fuel in then. The rest may and have the flexibility to run a little bit longer than that, which gives them better tyre quality later in the race. So it's a very, it's an intriguing battle at the moment in terms of how this is going to unfold. So that car that's on screen at the moment is, uh, so we'll just have a look at that little contact again for Blanchard at uh, turn 11. Here it is from the lower angle off the wall. It wasn't just the mirror that was the right rear guard. We'll come back to this strategy discussion. Neil, just down in the uh, control centre of Team Vodafone, Adrian Burgess is here, and there's a lot of work going on at the moment about how they might handle this clutch situation. Adrian, I know you're busy, but uh, lounge has got a hydraulic problem with the clutch. Well, he's reported a problem with the clutch, uh, which is unfortunate because we've got the two quickest cars out there. We lost a little bit of track position as he um, got himself used to it, but he's punching out good times again now. Uh, we're just working out what we're going to do at the stop. Clearly, it's not ideal coming in for a stop with no clutch, but we've got a system in place which we're going to use. We've just got to keep soldiering on. We're still in, the, still in this fight, and we've got to get him as many points as we can. All right, mate. Good luck. Cheers, mate. Hey, Bruins, can you just ask, Adrian, what, what will they do there? That will be a real issue coming in in first gear, trying to stop without the clutch functioning. That will be a real drama to put fuel in this car. Critical there too that Adrian said we've got to get some points, we've got to stay out there and keep going. Remember Craig Lowndes is equal second now in the championship with Mark Winterbottom. They're 209 points adrift of Jamie Winker. So try to make this as clear as possible. I'll come back to all that. We'll take a break and uh, just want to unfold that strategy for you. But it's a 10 second margin Salo to Briscoe with Dunbreck in position three at the moment. David Brabham in fourth.
Welcome back. We're edging closer now to the critical lap number. So just having a bit of a think about the strategy that's unfolding here in this race. As we look at some of these awesome aerial shots. You've got Salo leading the race at the moment. He's got 12 seconds over Ryan Briscoe. But through the day, he's been racing Carnival and Jamie Wincup. He's got a 40-second lead over him. He came in on lap 13 to take that opportunistic stop, which means that he effectively runs out of fuel on standard numbers that we use about lap number 56. We're not far away. And we saw him pull his vent out of his helmet in the break, so he's getting ready for that. When he comes in, it'll take 36 seconds to go through the pit lane, plus the fuel. It's going to be 120 litres or very close to it. It's another 36 seconds, so it's 72 seconds stationary and the transit in, out, etc. Car one came in on lap 35, wind cup. He can stop as early as 56, fill up and get home, but he can go all the way out to lap 81. If he does stop at lap 56, and I'm sorry about so many numbers here, then he's only got to stick 46 seconds of fuel in. But they won't do that, I don't think, at Vodafone, unless the safety car presents them that opportunity. They'll run him longer. And the longer they run car number one, the shorter the window at the end on the tyres. So you'll have the two guns in the cars, both with very similar track position, with perhaps a slight edge to FPR, depending on how things go. Jamie is making ground on him at the moment. We reckon it's about 10 seconds different. Here he is fiddling with his gear, ready to come in. He's in. So this is going to be really interesting, folks. Yeah, and Neil, I want to have a look at this brake chain. Pain, chain These discs we've got on the ground have come out of the oven in there. They're preheated to, pre to take the thermal shock out of it. Now, I'll put my gun on there. I'm getting 570 degrees centigrade as he's standing there. They push the pistons back. Pads out of the way. Now, the old pad's on the ground here. Oh, wow, that's hot. That's hot. And they're tapered. And I can tell you from a driver's point of view... For Will to go out now and have a nice full pedal when he puts his foot on the brake is such a confidence booster. And this will be a performance advantage for these guys. Now, oh, geez, he stalled it. That's not good. Now, when that car goes, you watch these guys, what they'll do, they'll grab the tyres, they'll bring the tyres, and straight away inside, the guys will jump on them. They'll get the hot pressures of these tyres. For the next time they race, you look straight away. Off come the caps. Very important. They get those measurements to know what cold pressures to start new tyres with next time. Yeah, so they're looking at uh, surface temperature of the tyre in three positions, the inside edge, the centre and the outside, and they're also looking at the hot pressures as they came off. That helps them with the database of information. That was costly, that stall, and I'm a bit surprised to see the brakes, the brake pad change there in the middle of it as well, but uh, that hasn't helped their cause. It just adds a layer of risk, because if that doesn't happen, and you don't have a good clean stop, the little stall, as you said, was costly. But if you don't get that done properly, then you just lose more time against Wing Cup. Now, Wing Cup basically can come in any time now because this ride home for Will Davison, they've done their stop, they can make it home. So they're asking now, because if I was Vodafone now, what I'd be doing is coming in reasonably shortly and just racing the guy who has been leading. Because they will get home their car's the best on tyres, take the risk out of anything to do with a safety car. So this is a very important couple of laps in this race to see how Vodafone respond to the recent change from FPR. And it was almost first to blink. Salo had to come in early. That put him on a different strategy. The speed from Wing Cup's been extraordinary. His last five or six laps have been unbelievable. He's been doing mid-twirls and is clearly the fastest car out there. You have to work out now whether you come in immediately or not. Mark Dutton was quick to jump on the phone straight away to Jamie Lincoln and ask him about the car. That's what I'd be doing. You just take the risk out. You race the guy that you are trying to beat in this race at the moment is the Mikasalo will Davison combination. Okay, let's start uh, using up these guys. We won't be out for that much longer. So Dutton, Mark Dutton just confirming what you were discussing there. So they don't, they had the opportunity to keep on running, as I said before, but they'll cover him, basically. Another good job from Ryan Briscoe. On our numbers, given those numbers that Neil just went through, if they stop in the next couple of laps, so what they'll do now is they'll bring Lowndes in, that'll get him home, and then after that, 
you'll see wink up in. Watch the problem here with the He'll knock it into neutral. They've probably got permission from the current technical director to let the wheels spin if he's got a clutch driver. Nothing in pit lane, it's going to go okay, So what he's done is he's plucked it into first gear and then uh, instead of just crunching it into first, rotating him and dropping, which then gets into the me messy, foggy area of the wheel spinning, but you can get an exclusion from the CTD from that. They've gone about it the other way. They've dropped him on the road in first gear, hit the start button, wound the car up. It's an awkward way to do it, but it started the way he went. So the smart way, just to get it all clear for you, when you've got a clutch problem and you're locked in gear, then what he did is as he come in to the pit lane, he popped it into neutral to get it into the bay. Then he turned the car off. The car was serviced. It was dropped on the ground. He put it into first gear and used the starter motor to start the engine and off he drove. So very, very clever, good improvisation. This is what this sport's all about sometimes. It's about thinking on your feet and getting through those awkward circumstances that this sport throws at you. Well, Team Motorphone have got so used to leading the charge. Today, they've had to react in a couple of areas. One to cover FPR with Jamie Wincup. The other, of course, as you just saw, to react to the problem for Craig Lounge. Shane Van Giersbergen in. As the field cleanses, Wincup is moving to the top of the field, but expect to see him in. Pit lane drive through penalty for uh, car 51 Murphy. Here's Lounge. Starts her up. Plucks her into first. No, goes, this is starter. Starter. Just drives around. It's like a Sunday afternoon like drive. It's now. like Midnight Motors. Black flag for car number 51 exceeding the pit lane speed limit, which goes along with Crompo. That drive through that they got for the unsafe release as well, so it's coming down hard on uh, Justin Wilson and Greg Murphy's entry. So watch for Wink cover the next two or three laps. Who will we put in? every effort into doing the fastest laps he can possibly do. Use these tyres up. And when he comes in, we'll give you the caps in terms of what fuel he's going to put on. Every bit of road, you see how close he was there at turn 11. There's 38 seconds difference between Win Cup and Davison on the road at the moment. Wind Cup is in position two, but about to stop in the not too distant future. Much, uh, life left in tires, mate. And Davison is in position nine. Oh, it's a lot of oil mist in the back of that number seven car, Tim Blanchard. Yeah, it's hurt something at the rear of the car and it's uh, leaking transmission oil at the moment. Yeah, a little bit more than oil mist, Neil. I just got down on the ground, had a look under the thing is, Covered from oil, it could be coming from up the front of the car. Wouldn't necessarily think it is the rear. Okay, I'm not sure. Thanks, Logo. So no brake rotor change here for Mark Winterbottom. Tweaking the mirror, he's obviously bumped that against the fence. Go, 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 go. See that again, that level of intensity. What he's stressed about is the Lucky 7 crew just in front of him making his angle awkward. That's what we saw in that previous stop. He wants them to step back so that he doesn't have to move too far to the right. So here comes Lowndes. It's a comfortable re-entry for... Mark Winterbottom, they were going to top him up with some dry ice there, but decided against it. He ran out of time in pit lane. He's going to have to sweat it out for the rest of this one. Another 40 laps to go. But David Brabham's just come into the pits, which now leaves Win Cup in the lead of the race, and he just shot through one of the chicanes as well, Win Cup. He's got to be very careful. He did a 12-4. That tells us he's pushing. If he goes through a chicane, you know he's on the hustle. So he did a 112.4, Jamie, and the margin back to Will, who's eighth, is 39.9 seconds. And they'll look for the Davison time as well. 
and uh, Lowndes has got a bad sportsmanship flag for the overusing the curbs. That'll go hand in hand with his frustration of having to wind it out of there on the starter in first gear. So those, those two will be linked. 113.5 for Davison. So basically a second difference between Jamie and Will on that lap, and it'll be because Will is battling with traffic. There is the triple eight up on the starters rostrum there. So that's the warning to Lowndes. Check out James Courtney here, just climbing all over the back of Jonathan Webb. A la what he did yesterday. Eventually the, the challenge ran out of puff. So Webb comes in. Damage there. A lot, of, a lot of damage on the right front. Just have a look at this. Jonathan Webb, no dramas, no rush. Mm. Now he rejoins. So, Wing Cup versus Davison, the gap between first and seventh, which is where they'll be racing. The next round of pits will be 42 seconds. Ooh. He's had some big moments today, Lowndes, hasn't he? Here's one of them. Look this at this. This is the curb. This and is the curb we're talking about. Yeah, so if he uses too much of that curb, then that triggers the electronics and uh, that's noted up in race control. And, and that's the turn nine curb, so that's the one that he's been warned for. He tends to um, get a bit stressed. The smile disappears, turns into a grimace in those situations, and there's more of it just flying over the curbs. And so he's pushing very hard to recover that lost time for the drama in the pit lane tear off removed there for car number 22 james courtney and they're still investigating that uh, oil still a lot of work going on at the back of that car jack daniels racing Yeah, Neil, just going to know what's happened is when they've, uh, it's obviously hit a curb somewhere on the circuit, which happens here, as we know, and one of the oil flow fittings on the very base of the diff uh, has been torn off. Thanks for the update, Marco. Lowndes continues to go a bit ballistic on those cur the curbs. He's currently in 11th spot. His teammate is in the box seat, but he will have to stop sooner or later, and that will put him into a... Head-to-head -head battle, you reckon, with Will Davison. Thank you. 
confirming still black flag, CLP, car 22, continual overuse, turn 9 curve. Welcome back. There's a little bit of drama brewing here for Jamie Wincup. Remember, he has to come back in and top up to get to the end of the race. He now gets clear of Steve Owen in car 49. But all of those little hold-ups will end up costing him dearly at the end. And Sebastian Bourdais is pretty fired up about it as well. You might have just seen that graphic. A black flag has been shown to car 22. He's now found the black stuff on the armor all sign. So overuse of the curbs for, for James Courtney. Oh, it's come way out of the throttle there in the middle of the straight. Cup. He's the race leader. He's got 26 seconds over Rick Kelly. But the man that we're watching closely is Will Davis, and he's 41 seconds behind. And 12-9, uh, the last lap for Win Cup. Lowndes has got past Jonathan Webb. He's pressing super hard right now, Lowndes. He's had the humour bypass after what happened in the pit lane. You can always tell with him. The, the language, the way in which he drives the car is always the same. You know, there's a fair bit of force and anger in Craig when he gets cranky like this. So uh, he's just driving maximum attack at the moment. Every lap's a qualifying lap. Take no prisoners. So you have the crosshairs on everybody. Beware. And it might sound Good easy driving the car without the clutch. It's not easy. Sometimes to break the load in the braking area and get it back a gear when the wheels are almost stopped, it's impossible to get them out of gear. Sometimes on the exit of the corner, when you want to grab the gear nicely with the clutch, you obviously can't do that when the clutch doesn't function. So Lowndes doing this around this sort of circuit is a very, very good drive. A lot of the guys that use left foot braking don't use the clutch that much, and this is Lowndes now. And one of the difficulties with this is you get down there and you've got to feed a gear to it. Without the clutch, sometimes it doesn't accept the gear, as I said before. So, nice pass. Very nice pass. <laughs> James Hinchcliffe is finding new ways to keep cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. All that there. So, this is uh, car number nine, Shane Van Gisbergen. Is here at the field at the moment, down in 15 between David Ball and Steve Johnson. Been there or thereabouts in the championship all year. And uh, after yesterday, stays in fifth position. He's 2,098 points. He's 800 odd points away from the lead. And he's. Uh signalling his intentions to David Wall. Pretty clear. Yes, sir, we are on the lead lap. If you get past Wall, that'll make it even better. I don't think Shane needs much encouragement, typically. No, from uh, Dave Stewart. He's uh, usually absolutely uh, floorboarding that thing. He drives very, very hard. This is Russell Ingle, and that's the shot from his left rear. And this is where you see the extremes of the load going into that Dunlop soft tyre, into the suspension, through the, the damper and the spring, just extraordinary. And this is in the tame part of the circuit, the northern end, up towards SeaWorld. A bit 
livens up when you get down into the turn one, two, three complex and then halfway down the back straight near the Surface Paradise Beach area. This is where the car's loaded through the front straight area into turn one. Turns one, two, three right up against that wall. Even in that little short shoot, the cars get back to 160 kilometres an hour. This is the slowest the corner. It's Rob Star on the radio. And Russell at the moment is in position number six for Super Cheap Auto. Watch this. Oh. Would not want to be a left-hand rear shot. Well, it's stunning, isn't it? And all the little componentry involved in all that, all, all capable of soaking and dispersing that load. As we look at the super slow-mo of car number five, unbelievable. Mark Winterbottom actually got a warning for the little launch across the turn nine curb that time. Wind Cup is the leader. He's got a 32-second margin. laps to go safety car has been called onto the track here at surface paradise which allows jamie Wincup to come straight into pit lane fuel her up put some new boots on and head back out for the run home this will be time stop for fuel yeah they're adding uh, 10 odd seconds of fuel should be 30 odd liters We've got the fuel flow rate restricted a little at the moment. This is Lowndes turn 11. Little brush with the wall there. Plucks the mirror off. No margin left. Back up, mate. Four tyres. Do you need any roll centre? They've done their best to wipe that camera off there all weekend, haven't they? <laughs> Gave it a good go yesterday. So debris on the circuit, the reason why the safety car has come out, it's right there at turn 11. So the debris sitting there will need to be cleaned up. It's just right on the exit of turn 11, a couple of cars have run over that and you can slice a wheel. So what's happened is that's caused a safety car and Jamie Wincup has come into pit lane, taken his stop, filled up, put some new tyres on. And that's him exiting pit lane. So that's the scenario. The race leader, Wing Cup, has come in and he's now good to go. A critical time as well. So he has uh, 30 laps to do on this tyre set, Jamie Wing Cup. And uh, there he is, tucked right in behind the man he's racing, who has to do 47 laps on this tyre set. So came in on, uh, car six came in on lap 55. Fresh brakes on, on car six, but that's a long way to go on that tyre set. And, exactly. that's, and that's exactly what Will Davison said when he was standing there in the garage waiting to take over from Mika Salo, that he was happy with the position that he was gonna come out in and obviously knew that they could go through just in that one stop, but he also knows that he's gonna have some older rubber to take on his good mate in Wink Cup. 
Sets it up for a thrilling finale. So restart underway. Tim Slade leading the charge here on the Gold Coast. Oh, Will Davison going through. So Slade last came in on lap 62. David Brabham, so he can go the distance to the end. This is going to be lively on the restart. Under 30 laps to go. So the bottom line here is that uh, Wincup's got to do 30 laps. Davison's got to do 47 on a tyre set. And Tim Slade, who we've kind of been ignoring, has got to do 40 laps. But he's got the best track position of all. Great effort, starting from 11th. Slade and Brabham both came in to, to today reporting confidence in the car. So take all the strategy away now, guys. What this is all about is sprint to the end. And Wincup, with the youngest tyres, should have some advantage in terms of that speed in the closing stages. But who knows, because Slade genuinely leads. Will Davison's been fast all weekend and has had a bad run. His mistake yesterday, you heard him say earlier today, he wants to make up for it. Wincup, Tander right in behind. Russell Ingle and Mark Winterbottom. It's a great lineup with Lowndes just there in the foreground. In Russell. front of Dave Reynolds. Russell thought about having a look on the inside of Garth Tander. Wincup's furiously reckons that Russell's blocking him too hard at the moment. So we'll keep an eye on this for you. So head up towards the turn six chicane. Near impossible to pass on the running there. There they are. Right on him, Winterbottom. Always such a nervous time. The first few laps after a safety car, especially at this stage. I'm not surprised by Winterbottom. Oh, sorry, with Wink up there, Matt, because he's lost some ground on Davison in those early laps. He may, they may have chosen to start those tyres slightly down. They were green tyres when they put them on, but if you start the early pressures, the cold pressures down. The first couple of laps are very hard to get those tyre temperatures and pressures up. So it looks at the moment like Davison has got the pace. And it'll be later in this stint that you'll see the form of Wind Cup. Yeah, and Scott, you could well be onto something. I mean, without naming names, because they're very defensive. As, oh, I thought I moved there. Very defensive about giving away tyre pressures. But I can tell you, I've seen tyre pressures here this weekend lower than ever. Well, this here comes Frosty up the inside now of Ingle coming out of the hairpin. This is the run up to the chicane I spoke about. It's not easy because someone's got to yield. And Russell does. You can't go through there side by side. So Ingle was the one that had to blink then. 
He's got Lowndes on him now as well. Frosty used a lot of curb then, Neil. If the other guys are being pinged for turn nine curb, there was a lot of curb used in the middle of that. And it didn't register. So he clears the spot now, position five for Winterbottom. And the tone in his voice is, don't mess with me. So this is Winterbottom. Morse code on the back of Russell Ingalls' bumper at turn three. So that's the replay. It's probably the reason why he was on the radio there before. So this is the battle for the lead. Back live. Now Car the other 47, half, Tim Slade. Sorry, mate. The other half of the Ford Performance Racing crew, Will Davison, is going to try and do the same to Tim Slade, but that brings Jamie Wincup up closer. This is a genuine, real sprint. It's the uh, man behind this team, James, James Rosenberg, who's been a great supporter of young Australian racing talent for a long time, dating right back to when Mark and I were in Formula Holt. He looked after Mark Poole. He's the guy that's invested with the Stone Brothers in Tim Slade. Lucky seven, car number 47, that's leading this race. He's got basically a one car leg lead, and he's under very big pressure at the moment. We've seen some ripper drives from him in the past. Well, his race at Ipswich last year with Craig Lowndes was very good. You and I commented then, Cropper, that it was one of his best drives. And certainly a weekend for him where he was able to battle with Lowndes in a genuine sprint race. But what he's got now is his hands full. He's got his mirrors full of Will Davison and right behind his wing cup. This is leading one of Australia's biggest races around one of the most difficult and unforgiving racetracks. And if you win cup at the moment, I'd be nursing the tyres. Keeping an eye on these guys, hoping someone does something silly and not have to spend a penny too early. Winner Bottoms continuing the charge. He was fastest, the only man in the 112s that last time around. So his next target will be Garth Tander. It's David Brabham looking on. <laughs> He loves a win. He's sniffing a win. He's looking. He's go to me. He's had a few over the years. Simtek Formula One. Great competitor at Le Mans. He won it outright in 2009 with the factory Peugeot team. Equaling the feat of his brother Jeff. who did the same with the factory Peugeot team years early. He's highly regarded all around the world in sports car racing. And he's had a career. He raced here in Australia in the mid 80s, started racing in Ford Lasers with Mark Scaife alongside us and uh, progressed into single seaters, left our shores and has cut a, an international career in America in particular and in Europe for a long, long time. And uh, he comes out here infrequently and drives V8 supercars. Always takes a bit to get your head around it, according to David, because they're very different cars as we talk about a lot. But he's uh, helped deliver this car in the lead of the race at the moment. Down the inside goes Will Davison. Good move. Good move. Little bump at the end there. There was a little bit of contact when Tim Slade turned in, but that was a very good impromptu move. There's Mika Salo looking on board there. That was a good move from Will Davison. Very minor contact. That'll be fine for both those cars. Now, Jamie Winkup's got to get himself into There's only two spots. There's this one into turn 11 which now Davison covers. He knew it didn't come off the chicane very well. And they're very close now. Oh, this is really close. Wincup's decided to go deep here. He's decided to make the move now if he can get it. Look how close he is on car 47. And Winterbottom, watch Winterbottom. He's all over Wincup here as well. It's nowhere land to try and go around the inside there at turn 12 because you end up on the wrong side of the road at 13 in the case of Wincup. But he's trying everything at the moment. The reason he can't afford to do much of that relaxing I spoke about a lap earlier is because Winterbottom's on it. And look what Will Davison's done. He'd be saying, go Tim. Because as, as much as Tim defends, the better it is for Will Davison. Because he needs to give those tyres a breather on the trading post entry as much as he can. Oh, Here he is down the move, inside. Very late. Turn three. Locked together. These things are absolutely locked together. Coming off three. And wind cups up the inside. Slade will argue. This is a game of chicken at 250 kilometres an hour. On the run into the chicane. Who breaks first? It's Slade. Slade yields. And lets Jamie Wincup go through. And Wincup had to do it the hard way. That was an incredible battle. 
of who wants to blink first. Debris on the road round there. And now Mark Winterbottom nestles up behind Tim Slade as well. So stand back now, Matt, because Wincup will be after Davison and Winterbottom will get Slade. So there will be an absolute sprint between the three fastest guys this weekend. Remember that Slade to do the run from the, his last stop on lap 62 to the end of the race is a 40 lap window on the tyres. For car number six for Will Davison, he's got to do 47 laps. He needs to give them a breather out front. But now he's got a man chasing him in Jamie Whitcup, his old mate. They used to share together. Look at this, down the inside and done. Mark Winterbottom from the chopper. We see it at turn three. And look at the queue forming behind. Lowndes is not far away from this. He's got Tander Ingle. Lowndes next in the queue, Timmy Slade. Here it is again from the shot down on the ground here. Down the inside, Winkup. Tell you what, that is very cheeky. If, if Tim turns in, both of them, have a look how much room there is here. If Tim turns in, they go in that fence. For the championship, that was a very, very bold move. Well, he showed up at turn 11 previously that he was prepared to take a risk, Jamie Winkup, because he didn't want to let Will Davison skip away in this last 20 laps this one is going all the way down to the wire the gold coast always puts up a great race and it's happening again this afternoon We're heading towards a grandstand finish, no doubt, here at the Amaral Gold Coast 600. And these cars are being pushed to their limits, leading the field. The last man outside of Craig Lowndes or Jamie Wincup to win a race is Will Davison. So Team Vodafone have been on an 11 race winning streak since we left Phillip Island in May. 
Will Davison won on the Sunday afternoon in May, and since then it's been all Triple Eight. It's today the day he gets one back. He wants to make up for yesterday. Started on the front row of the grid, car six ended up in the wall. Davison put his hand up for that one. And now he's fighting off his good mate, his former flatmate, Winkup. But Mark Winterbottom is coming and coming fast. He's just done a 1.12.5, so he's the quickest of the leading three who are now pulling away from Tim Slade. He certainly is, Matt. He's got the best speed of those three cars. And he achieves the speed in a different area of the track versus Jamie Winkup. Winkup's good on the stop-go stuff, but in the faster-flowing stuff, Mark Winterbottom's car is superb. Have a look through here. This is the area that he's had speed all weekend. He comes off the last chicane, off here, and he, he comes at him lap after lap. He puts remember, himself in a good spot down here too, Cropper. Sorry to step on you there. Uh, remember Sandow, when they got down to Danny Nong Road and he had the eyes on and had a lunge. He's got that look about him again at the moment. He looks determined this weekend, doesn't he, Mark Winterbottom? He's clawed back some points in the championship yesterday. He's a bit of a man on a mission at the moment, so I don't think he's going to take this down, lying down. And it's an awkward one for Jamie because he doesn't want to lose touch with the race leader here because he knows there's an opportunity to pounce on Will late in the stint based on tyres, but can't afford to relax because Frosty will be beat him up. So Davison's tyres are 17 laps older than Wind Cups, and whole, uh, Winter Bottoms are 11 laps older. But at this stage of the race, whether or not Jamie's trying to conserve them a little bit or not, don't know, but at this stage of the race, it doesn't seem to be affecting the FPR boys. Will Powell looking on, top left. Mark Dutton, Sebastian Bourdais. Bottom. Sebastian going for back-to-back -back wins this weekend with his partner in crime, Ooh. Jamie Winker. She used a lot of curve that time. Mark Winterbottom was right up on that curb and a, and a big two-wheel jump. And just on this lap, Wink Cup's come at Will Davison because if you just go and do those times, Winterbottom's lost four tenths of a second to the second sector on Wink Cup. So you can just see that he's been dropped off. And this is the phasing and the little mistakes that get made. It's such a difficult racetrack to just do qualifying lap after qualifying lap. And they are driving these cars as hard as you can possibly drive them. You just saw there their provisional championship points puts Mark Winterbottom into outright second if it stays the way it is. So that time around, 112.4, the fastest lap of the leading three, belongs to the man in the middle, Jamie Wincup. And, and no one else matching in, in the 12s. Basically, as soon as you get to Slade, they're all in the 13s. Yeah, they're pushed away. It's a race in three. Which means that Will Davison's really at the outer limits here of using the tyres. That's exactly what he doesn't need. He needs a relaxed run if he's to be able to get away with this. This is probably the longest stint. It's the best time to do it, mind you. Later in the day with longer shadows and more rubber on the road than at any other time of the weekend. But this will be the longest stint I'd say any tyre set has seen all weekend trying to achieve 47 laps out of them. And that's why earlier we were saying you should come in and then put yourself into the same phase as Wink Up. But maybe their strategy, maybe we are totally wrong in that respect. If, he, if he's able to hang in, then we were totally wrong about this. If he, can, if he can hold this last 10 or 15 laps and the difference between the Wink Up tyre performance and what Will Davison's got to deal with, then they've done a fantastic job. That's a, that's a very well thought out and well driven strategy if they can get away with it. What they've done at Fort Performance Racing is they've gambled on track position. Track position is the key element that they've wanted in their play. Team Vodafone have gone about it a different way, but they've ended up in a very similar place on the racetrack. One's got younger tyres, and here they are. Mark Winterbottom, well, he stopped on lap 61, so he's kind of halfway in between that scenario. So his tyres are a little older than Wind Cups, but a little younger than Will's, his teammate. And this purpose that I was saying about where the strengths and weaknesses of the cars are, on this end of the circuit, Wind Cups car is good. This is the main beach, northern end, and on the other end, where the car has to flow and the aspect of driver demand and mid-corner grip makes a big difference there. 
you find that the FPR car is slightly better than Wink Cup. So, who has got something left to have a crack at this top three? Tim Slade's drifted away. Garth Tander's charge remains static in fifth. This just shapes up as just an unbelievable 10 laps. But honestly, these guys, they will, the brake pedal will be on the floor, the tyres will be destroyed, the, the every effort of jumping over these curbs will be bent stuff, the steering will be off centre, the car will be a dog and they will be trying to do qualifying laps. On that, you mentioned brake pedal on the floor. Remember that for car number six, Will Davison, they did brake pads in that car. They didn't do them in car number one. In fact, I haven't seen anybody else do a pad change, but clearly we don't get to see every single car in the field. But that is a little difference that there'll be a better brake pedal in car number six. This is a notoriously hard place on brakes. So, that, so that's that, another little factor that, that you just should actually roll onto the table as we try and figure out how this will play out. Down here at turn four, James Courtney. On the inside of David Reynolds there, got wide. I'm surprised normally somebody ends up in that in that sign on the on the Eddie head sign on the uh, exit here of turn four and not this weekend but they did make contact Jonathan Webb pit lane penalty overuse of curbs so car 19 has been shown the black flag so that helps the cause for James Courtney Lee Holtzworth David Reynolds David uh, gets one spot back and he was just on the raw end proceedings down there at the hairpin. Here's this bunch. So that's um, Jeff Slater on the radio. So Jono will be coming in this lap. That's a disappointing way to end what has been a very good weekend for him and Mark Lee. Oh, oh, that might that? Courtney. Some Debris on the circuit, so that may trigger another safety car. It's Bruce Jenkins at Techno Auto Sports. It was, it was Courtney? Yeah, it was Courtney, yeah. sure, yeah. So, Davison is driving very well. I mean, we've been talking about this difference in tyre life and the difference in strategy. But to get away with this now is just fantastic. The drive that he is putting on is making up totally for that mistake that he made Yesterday, he wasn't concentrating, went straight ahead at turn 11. Put himself and Mikasalo out of yesterday's race. Have a look at this. This is Courtney behind Webb. Bang. Another mirror gone. He's been through the wars a bit just in the recent past, Will Davison. Of course, he had that beautiful lap to score that pole at Bathurst. Look at that, Frosty. Absolutely dragging that thing, the fourth gear rev limiter on the run up to turn 11. And the boxes that you saw on screen there a moment ago generated on that timing graphic. You can see how much time that he's gained in the last four laps. Have a look at the, um, the, the amount of room and how accurate they're driving. And from on board this car, we were just watching Wink Cup. The car was sliding and it made the curb beautifully like it missed the fence on the left and then it missed the fence on the right by nothing and this is the sort of level of commitment that you've got to have in these phases of the race if you're going to win these events the last win for oh, davison i reckon he actually gave it a rub then the last win for him was back at phillip island which is a long time ago and like we say since then it's been nothing but team vodafone on the top step of the dais so we just saw a shot before of Will Powell. Debris on the circuit, turn 11, debris on the circuit, turn 11. Safety car, stand by. Uh, you don't need to trim anything. Right, so, uh, the one right here. Oh, that was so close. Millimetres. There was, you can see stuff falling off the car, and the safety car is going to come out. Now, this will energise Will's campaign. It'll help him. A mirror on the track. It'll give that tyre life a little assistance. And he'll be saying, although he had a little little buffer of one second, he had a 
One second lead over Wing Cup. This is crucial. This restart. Oh. <laughs> what, what it also does is it brings everybody else into the game as well. And you just hope that they all play clean to the end here. So this is that replay from a bit earlier. We made the remark about James. Was it James bits and pieces? And the answer to that was emphatically yes. Back to Greg Murphy here in the Pepsi Max entry. And that's marbles, rubber debris coming off that car being shaken loose by the curbing at uh, turn nine. And then watch the launch here as he picks up the curb very aggressively over the top of the curb. And uh, just pitches the car up on the two wheels. So they've brought the car number 14, Fabian Coulthard in. I assume to top him up. And uh, stick some tyres on it. When did he last come in? He was last in on... Um, 56. 56, yeah. So under 10 laps to go. Safety car out there to clean up debris at turn 11. Also some, I think, on the approach down to uh, the first chicane. So the field becomes compressed. Some have not a care in the world this weekend. But what a different story it is down there on the circuit where Will Davison, Jamie Wincup and Mark Winterbottom and now the rest of them are going to let fly at the end. So let's take you all the way back on the highlights where car 18 of Peter Cox was left stranded and somehow Gianni Morbidelli managed to stop within inches of the back of the Team Norton entry and avoid the same kind of drama that we had yesterday. So it was a safety car start. Effectively, it was a rolling car start, a rolling start after that. As Nick Heidfeld got turned around down there at turn four in car 55. The co-drivers, it was Manassian on board, out of car eight. Stephen Saracen, sorry. Hey, and that was Morbidelli. Around the back chicane. Straight into the wall for the team BOC entry. Greg Sarazen. So they would end up doing that 34 lap distance and then so. Bottolo entry. But what about this one for Michael Caruso? Leaves the pit bay. Wonders why his car's not going too well. Well, he's only got three wheels. They simply just didn't get it off. Richard Lyons knows how to do a V8 entry in pit lane. And look at the intensity of Mark Winterbottom. He's been like that all weekend. Craig Lowndes hasn't had a clutch for a long time. But G did that well to get it into the box, restart the car and get it away without too many dramas. And then from this, on, uh, from this spot on, this is all main drivers having a go at it. Safety cars would come out because of debris on the circuit. Will Davison and Tim Slade got together, but that gave Will the lead of the race. Wing Cup also had to fight past Tim Slade. They both took a really deep breath going into turn six, and it brings us all the way to this stage after more than two hours of racing today around this incredibly tough street circuit. It's going to come down to this. A seven or eight lap sprint. Davison's tyres are much older than Wing Cup's. Winterbottom has been on the charge like never before. He's an angry man this weekend. He's putting all that angry energy into making car five car very fast. Look at this. They almost collected. Oh, there was a bubble there. Well, that's helped Will Davison. And Davison pulls away. We'll need to look at that again, though, when all this settles down. There's too much to watch at the moment, but they've got to maintain speed. Wing Cup really unsettled on the approach into turns one, two and three. And Winterbottom's giving him a push along. Wing Cup fighting, he steps over to the left-hand side. Slade now nudging Wing, uh, Winterbottom as well. Will Davison thinks it's Christmas. Ingalls getting stuck in there with Craig Lowndes as well. They're battling for sixth and seventh. Then you've got uh, Rick Kelly in the Jack Daniels car forcing his way up here also. Oh, massive there from Wing Cup frantic on these restarts and a monster margin here for Will Davison. 1.3 seconds through that last timing reference up to the second sector. So Davison, Winkup, Winterbottom. This is Winterbottom. We're looking from the bumper bar of Jamie Winkup's car at the moment.
up to the northern section of the circuit. The run to the final two turns, 14 and 15. Watch for Winterbottom. You'll be thinking about turn three. He'll want to size him up on the run into one and as, be as close as he can. And if he's close enough, he'll throw it down the inside at three. Jamie will be a wake up though. And Davison, the gamesmanship at the restart got him away. He was able to get a big gap. There'll be a little, a little bit of drama about this in terms of the speed and holding the speed. So this is the restart. Davison leads. Win cup, winner bottom. Speed comes up, has to stop, slow up. They all bump and he drives away. There will be some conjecture about whether that start was fair. The lead car is supposed to maintain speed. However, this is not, don't worry about all that. Because this is where it's at right now. Winterbottom is putting plenty of pressure on Winkle. Oh, he's in the fence. He's in the fence hard. That has knocked that mirror straight off that car. So another mirror goes flying. And Jamie Winkup is doing everything he can to try and stop Mark Winterbottom pushing and shoving him around this circuit. And he's actually sliding a bit at the moment, Jamie. A little more than I would have thought for a car with... For a car with younger tyres, sliding around a bit at the moment. So the gaps have opened fractionally. Will Davison over Jamie Winkup's 1.4 seconds. Then it's Winterbottom. There was a bit of fence rubbing on the previous lap. They all need to just take a breath now. We're not far from the chequered flag. Tim Slade's hanging on beautifully in fourth position. Then it's Tander, Lowndes, Ingle, Courtney, Holdsworth and Kelly. Turn 11. Have a look at this. Wind cup, no margin left. That's the mirror gone, but the bodywork stayed clear of the concrete. Thankfully for him, the mirror got punished. Now Winterbottom right under the rear wing once again and has a look at 11. Not a good place to do it because there's a big rise in the road and the crown in the road there at the apex makes it awkward. Winterbottom's hands are all over the place. He's doing everything he can to try and control this car. It's clearly not as balanced as he needs it at the end of this race. Power and Salo look on. Mark Dutton and Sebastian Bourdais also nervously look on. Jamie's got his hands full, the thing's sliding around, he's being attacked, which is taking his focus away from the race lead. One second is the margin, Davison to win cup. Half a second, win cup to win the bottom. There's Slade. The others are not close enough to do any damage here at the front of the field, but this man's got his hands full. Did you see how close he was to the Energizer sign when he turned in then? I reckon the car was against the fence when he turned it in. It's not a good day to play for keeps for Jamie Winkup. He's got 209 points and Courtney's come to the pit lane. He's got a 200 point, a nine point margin. An all or nothing play that yields nothing could be costly. So a second, a P2 here, even a P3 might be a strategically clever maneuver. And remember that's happened to him before here at this circuit. He knows what a bad result here can do for your championship chase. He's felt the lows. So what does he do? Push on and go for yet another victory. He's already won eight races this season. Will Davison hasn't won a race since May. He started the year by winning at least one race at every round up until we got to Phillip Island. From then on, it's been a real struggle. Three to go. Davison's hanging on. The tyres are going to hang in there. Wink up fast. Slap of the race right now. 12-3. So it might be that it's the tyres coming back to their fully recovered pressure. In those early laps, the reason why the thing was diving all over the place is they hadn't normalised enough. Because to do a 12-3 this late in the day, which was now surpassed by Jonathan Webb's just done a 12-2 fastest lap of the race down in the order after that penalty. To do that number means the balance and handling of the car isn't too bad after all. So I suspect it's just the rubber. A lot of air then for Whitcup right in the middle of the corner. He got too upset there by turn nine. Actually made the car slide too much and then it hurt the car off the end of the last part of the chicane. And that's where I've said the FPR cars look better through the middle of that chicane in terms of mid-corner speed. This is a great shot of this gap. Wing Cup's coming at it. Phenomenal to consider 
that when you put other co-drivers alongside and you throw all the variables of the traffic and the dramas that happened yesterday and it's still these two teams that float to the top and have the battle. So Will Davison, 0.6 of a second. He does have the speed at the moment. Jamie Wincup, but it was only three one hundredths of a second over the man he's chasing, Will Davison, on the last lap. And 12.48 for Will, 12.45 for Wincup, 12.58 for Winterbottom. Phenomenally close. So we'll check out the margin now, back to the next group. The Lone Ranger, Tim Slade, four. But these guys still in their battle. Tanner Lowndes, Ingle, Holdsworth, Johnson, Van Gisbergen, Coulthard, Rick Kelly, Davey Reynolds, and David Wall. That gets you back to 14. Here's Webb, 15. That's after his drive-through penalty. Back to the lead. How on earth these cars have stayed together after that oh, punish they've been put through by these curbs and walls. It's going to be last time to around. Go, mate. To go. <laughs> Mark Dutton is still pushing on Jamie Wincup. 12-6 for Davison, 12-5 Wincup, 12-6 Winterbottom. They're all doing the same numbers effectively. It's 0.5 of a second officially between these two. Grant McPherson on the blower to Will Davison now. The gap closes down a little bit, so Wincup. He's going to have a last charge at it. Up the back straight. Sixth gear, 245 kilometres on approach. To the chicane. The gap, nothing in it. Team Vodafone have been on an almighty roll. An 11 race winning streak. Will it come to an end here? Will Davison had revenge on his mind. After a disastrous day yesterday that started on the front row of the grid and ended in the wall, he had a job to do today, and he's come out and done it. He's held off Jamie Wincup and Mark Winterbottom. And Will Davison, for the first time in so many months, fights back to claim victory with Mick Asala. Another epic. Wink up and Bordet second. Winterbottom and Will Power third. Very good effort, wasn't it? Bloody Great job. Great job. Great effort. Richard Davison up on the wall. Will's dad in the black shirt. Tim Edwards was down there, the team principal. What a strategy, man. What a job, Mika. Thanks, guys. So sorry for yesterday, but. Uh... Oh, man, that's sweet. Thank you. Yeah, big comeback for Will Davison. Nice job thanking Grant McPherson, the man there with the headphones on, just in front of Mick Asalo, young engineer that he's been working with all year. And that'll be, in Will's words, sweet for them to be able to return to the top spot. It's been a long time. May, when we're at Phillip Island. Interesting to consider the two strategies. In the end, track position was able to deliver it. A long stint on those tyres for Willie handled it beautifully to be able to make it last that long. And, and hats off, absolutely fantastic strategy. Good driving, good engineering, and a great drive at the end there for Will Davison to hold out the benchmark guy in the category at the moment, Jamie Winkup. Excellent effort from Tim Slade and David Brabham too. They started 11th, finished just one spot shy of the podium. Lee Holdsworth and Simon Paginot, good rescue job as well from 15th up till up to 8th. Rick Kelly and Graham Ray Hall were always in the mix this weekend and James Courtney and Darren Turner ended up in uh, pit lane late in the race. So a couple of uh, DNFs. Peter Cox and James Moffat, Michael Patrizzi, Lucas Degrassi ended up not making it to the start. So from lap 55 onwards, Will Power was behind the wheel of car number six. So those tyres will be pretty well done and dusted. And he won't care. The trading post entry finds the chequered flag first. For the seventh time this year, only Wing Cup has won more races than Will Davison, but... It hasn't been a good run over the last few months, and that's the reason why he's slipped down in the championship order. And this will be a very good celebration. <laughs> you are a legend. 
you were saying earlier about it, Matt, about the Enduros. Yeah, mate, good job. Oh, great. You did more love for me. Well becomes the first Finn to win in the V8 Supercar Championship, so he gets a race win next to his name. And like we say, it breaks an 11 race winning streak this season for Team Vodafone. And therefore, Ford are back on the top step of the podium. Will Power be up there? After yesterday, Will Davison said, I've got one job today, and it's to make sure that Mika goes home with a surfboard. <laughs> well, he's done it. He'd need one of those in Finland, wouldn't he? Yeah. <laughs> make sure he's got a very thick wetsuit. So cars six, one, and five on the podium. Jonathan Webb, who was up there yesterday, ends up in 14th position with Mark Lead. A pit lane penalty cost him in the back end of the race. And it was a great job from Mika Salo to do that extended first stint. Well, Will Davison, when you were sitting in the garage waiting to go out, we talked about this strategy and how it might work for you. And you, all you said was you wanted to make up for yesterday. Congratulations, you have. I just wanted to get around the first lap, Brett. So I seriously wondered about myself last night. Took a good hard look at myself when I went to bed. Um, what a way to bounce back. Uh, just to thank Mika for his great job yesterday and today and all the boys who work late. Uh, I've got to learn how to string two days together, but after the last couple of months, we've had so much speed uh, and nothing to show. So uh, this is a sweet victory. So uh, it's great to share with this man. He's a legend and all my boys are the best. Well done. Mika, nice to take home a Gold Coast surfboard. Good reward for a couple of good quality drives for you over the last couple of days. Oh, it's great. Uh, I got one from last year. It's the second only, so. That's only second, so now we've got the first one, and uh, <laughs> thanks a lot, thanks a lot. It was a great weekend. Uh, yesterday was a bit of bad luck, but uh, it was good to bounce back today. Great team effort, you guys. Well done. Enjoy the top step of the podium. Uh, we will, and hi to everyone at home, all my lovely family. <laughs> good on you guys. Congratulations. So we duck over to Jamie Wincup and Sebastian Bourdais, who uh, again had a superb performance. Jamie, congratulations. You really slugged it out once again. It was touch and go there for a while. Yeah, thanks, Brett. Um, we're almost having deja vu. We had a, a win and a second on Sunday exactly last year, but um, can't, uh, oh, and two poles apparently. Uh, hey, can't thank Seb and the team enough. They did a phenomenal job, and um, we'll certainly take that. The, the heat, I don't know if you come across on the tally, but the heat was on there at the end, so um, yeah, really enjoyed it. We noticed that, and we noticed that in the restart as well. Yeah, hey, the restart was on. Uh, of course, I was going to get some pressure from Frosty, but um, held that out. My tyres are pretty, pretty cold on those, um, you know, um, what do you call it, safety car laps, but we got it back out there. Um, car's been excellent. We kept it clean. Um, now we head into the last three races. Sebastian, well done once again. You, you've come to the Gold Coast and had a fantastic campaign for another year. Yeah, you know, every time it seems like it's a lucky charm around here because when I was used to come in champ cars, we had great weekends as well. So, you know, couldn't be any happier for Jamie. It's, uh, you know, it's good we're uh, leaving this place with uh, an even bigger points lead, so couldn't be any happier for the team. Sebastian, maybe you should stay here. <laughs> I'll think about it. <laughs> right, guys, well done. Enjoy the podium. And now over to Mark Winterbottom and uh, Will Power, who put in a tremendous effort as well. Guys, congratulations. Frosty, well done. That was hard fought all the way, but two days and two podium results is well worth it. Yeah, it was. Um, nothing's gone smoothly in, in these races, and you've got to people out of sequence and all that sort of stuff. But, uh, yeah, it was good. It was a good race. We... Um, tried our hardest and uh, just couldn't get there at the end but um, at least Will got the win and the team got a win and uh, that's the important part. Will, nice to be home and racing here at the Gold Coast once again and getting a, another podium result. Uh, yeah, fantastic uh, job by the whole team, you know, for Will to get the win and unfortunately Wing Cup finished ahead of Frosty. I know he needs the points but he's still right there so I uh, had a lot of fun this weekend and enjoyed working with uh, Mark. He's an exceptional driver. Congratulations guys, enjoy the podium. Thanks mate. Uh, Craig Lowndes, mate, I know that was one of your hardest days in the seat, mate. Uh, for people at home, I reckon they would get how hard it is without a clutch, but tell us about the little sequence to get you out of the pit box. That was very clever. Well, of course, obviously the rule at the moment is not to spin the rear wheels at all. So, you know, I asked the boys. I already had it half in my, my mind what I was going to do, but had to grab neutral coming into the box, get it up on the air, turn the engine off, wait for it to drop, try and grab first, and then start it on the starter. So there was a whole sequence there going on that we had to make sure that we didn't get a drive-through penalty. 
And because I know you guys, I watched your testing the other week and you practice things that other teams don't, which is part of why you're a great team. Is that one of the things you already had a strategy for that already in place? Well, not normally, but uh, we have uh, reenacted that sort of in the past. So it was sort of, uh, you know, half in my mind what we had to do. The biggest thing, obviously, is not to spin that rear wheel. And, uh, of course, we did that. But then, of course, when you're racing, it's not so bad going up shifts, but going down shifts, trying to get that sequence right, the revs right, the road speed right, and getting first gear down in there. A few times I had the rear all locked up going in sideways. So, look, it's one of those things. It's just disappointing obviously to have a problem in the race but uh, we got six we got good points and now we move on to Abu Dhabi. Yeah so you are looking forward to that mate so clearly the car was fast enough if the clutch wasn't. Yeah well look it's one of those things we made improvements overnight I think uh, you know we did I'm not sure about Jamie was watching him he looked like he faded a little bit towards the end of that race but uh, you know we were on strong there right throughout the day Richard did a fantastic job you know we gave him a, a, a decent car yesterday gave him a much better car today and of course you know championship now is a bit of a long shot but uh, hopefully we can get back to second. Thanks for the chat, mate. I know it's knocked it out of your driving without a clutch, so well done. Thanks, Largo. It's a long stint. Craig Lowndes ended up sixth, and he drops one spot down in the championship point score. So going into today, it was equal second with Mark Winterbottom, 209 points adrift. So Jamie Wincup now has a 218-point lead heading into our final few rounds of the year, beginning in a couple of weeks' time at Yas Marina at Abu Dhabi. Race 23 of the year, the 2012 Armourall Gold Coast 600. Time for our podium presentation. Would you please congratulate in first place for Trading Post FPR Ford, Will Davison and Mikasalo. In second place for Team Vodafone, Jamie Wincup and Sebastian Bourdais. Third place, Orcon Steel FPR Ford, Mark Winterbottom and Will Power. And representing the winning team at Trading Post FPR Ford, Grant McPherson. Making the presentation to third place, Ross Morgan, the general manager, Queensland, Coca-Cola Amatil. Presenting to second place, Mr Steve Inch, the managing director, Oceana Beam Global. Making the presentation to our leading international driver, the Dan Wilden Memorial Trophy to Sebastian Bourdais is Paul Blair, the General Manager of Australia, New Zealand and China for Armoured Auto Group. Presenting to the winning team, Paul Lawson, National Field Sales Manager, Australia and New Zealand from the Armoured Auto Group. And presenting to our winners, first place trophy, will be Mr Ray Stevens MP, Assistant Minister to the Premier on e-Government. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2012 Armourall Gold Coast 600 Race 23 winners. Could have been about the only mistake Mikasalo made all day. Just about dropped the surfboard there on uh, Sebastian Bourdais' head. <laughs> it's a very unique podium this one anywhere in the world of motorsport but the end results the same for the winners the champagne tastes so much sweeter and it's a lucky 13 for Will Davison his 13th career race victory